So today, I'd like to help you feel more comfortable with something that no doubt makes many of you feel deeply uncomfortable, and that's organ donation. Some of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, I never really thought about organ donation. But now that you mention it, yeah, I'm beginning to feel deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be uncomfortable. In fact, it's miraculous. 6,935 people are dying because they have to wait. That's 19 people dying every day for an entire year. That's nearly 7,000 lives. That's equivalent to 13 747 jets filled to capacity, crashing every year, and there are no survivors. Now, if the FAA investigated these deaths and found that they could have all been avoided by a simple signature, they would demand action to stop these unnecessary deaths. 19 people die every day on the organ donation transplant list because there aren't enough people signing their organ donor consent forms. We need to take action. Now, there are many well-intentioned efforts out there to promote organ donation. Our grassroots organization, eLife New York, is just one. But this subject remains extremely difficult to penetrate into the popular conscience. They're formidable myths and barriers. But the things that we can do and need to do to educate the public and to facilitate an individual's decision to take action on becoming an organ donor. Almost all of you certainly know someone who has had a transplant or might benefit from one. Chronic diseases of the kidneys, liver, heart, and lungs are common and transplant, in many cases, is the best way to cure them. Transplantation is extremely successful these days, with the majority of recipients going on to live happy, fully functional lives, just as they were before they ever got sick. It's a life-transforming endeavor, and it's one of the most phenomenal successes of modern medicine. In order to have a transplant, you need an organ donor. Most or donor organs come from deceased individuals. But it's also possible to donate one of your kidneys, a part of your liver, or even part of your lung while you're still alive to someone in need. I'm going to focus on deceased organ donation, but much of what I'm telling you also applies to living donation. A single person can potentially save up to eight people's lives through organ donation. One heart, two lungs, two kidneys, a liver, pancreas, and intestines. We can even save up to nine people's lives if we split the liver under ideal circumstances. Now, through tissue donation, such as corneas, bone, tendons, skin, heart valves, and blood vessels, up to 50 people's lives can be dramatically improved by just one donor. If you're not an organ donor when you die, then you're taking a lot of people with you. The act of donation can bring profound meaning to the donor's life because this act immediately impacts the life of the recipient, but also impacts the life of the family and loved ones surrounding the recipient and the donor. Donor families often experience a profound sense of comfort and closure, knowing that the tragedy of death and deep loss resulted in renewal of life in many others. And this cycle of giving this incredible gift of life can continue by influencing others to consider donation either while we're still alive or when we pass. Over the past year, 118,000 people were waiting on the transplant list, but only 28,000 transplants were performed. It's heartbreaking for me as a transplant surgeon to see my patients die on a regular basis, even before I have a chance to help them. Recently, we had a young woman admitted to our transplant service whose liver was rapidly and completely failing. She was completely healthy just a few days prior. All of our tests could not reveal why her liver wasn't working. She wasn't ingesting any toxins like alcohol or Tylenol. She didn't have any viral hepatitis infections. And she had no diseases known to cause liver failure, nothing. The point is that without a liver transplant, she was going to die. So we put her on the top of the list, status one, and we waited. After five days, we hadn't even received a single phone call for an offer. At this point, most people in this situation would be dead. We had to wait another five days, 10 days total, until a liver came through. Now, fortunately for her, a 
We were able to transplant her, and she completely recovered. And she went home in 10 days to her family, including her two children, ages 6 and 11. Now, I'd like to say that there are always happy endings like this. After all, that's why I do what I do. But all too often, our patients die while waiting for a donor organ. This is all it really takes, a simple signature. So why are so few people signing up to be organ donors? It's easy enough to go to Donate Life America's website and click to be directed to your state's organ donor registry to sign up. Go ahead, let's all sign up right now. How many people's lives can we save in this room alone? 5,000? You can even go on Facebook these days and post your own thoughts on being an organ donor. Now, I doubt that all 900 million of you Facebookers out there are going to register, but efforts such as these to encourage the conversation about organ donation, to learn more about it, and to even take action if you wish, are highly commendable and critically important in our new socially connected world. Piece of cake, no-brainer, right? Well, there are myths and barriers that we face in realizing this necessary cultural shift. The main problem is that organ donation is icky. <laughs> Most of us would do something like this. Na, 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 I don't want to think about dying. Na, 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 I don't want to think about profound loss. Na, 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 I don't want to think about altering my physical being. Na, 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 stop! This kind of thinking is killing people. Yes, it's an inherently unpalatable subject, but the act of donation is truly miraculous. What an incredible gift to give in which part of our very physical being can live on in someone else. Most of us want to help others, especially the ones we love. Pure altruism is a sophisticated human act. Most of us don't contemplate practicing it until we're old and gray, but it's deeply ingrained in our DNA. There could be political barriers. For instance, an opt-out sy system for organ donation registration where you specifically have to check a box to say you do not want to be a donor, as practiced by certain European countries, is unlikely to replace the current opt-in opt -in system here in the United States. Check yes if you do want to donate. I think that's because we Americans generally don't like being told what to do by our government, and personal liberty is more highly valued than benefiting the public good. That's not a judgment, by the way. It's how it is, and we need to work with it. There could be cultural barriers as well, but these are surmountable with the right kinds of educational interventions. For instance, Hispanics are more likely to consent to donation if they discuss this decision with a priest beforehand. African Americans are more amenable to considering donation if they hear about it from their community leaders in appropriate social venues such as church or even barbershops. And then there are environmental barriers. Think of the two most common places where organ donation is considered, the DMV and the ICU. Now, <laughs> neither of these is really the best environment to consider such a profound decision, right? I think it's very important that we identify other more suitable environments for thoughtful consideration. Take estate planning, for example. Don't you think that when a client sits down with his or her attorney to discuss such things as living wills, healthcare proxies, and advanced directives, that a thoughtful conversation on organ donation should naturally be included? This isn't routine practice, and I think it should be. Other areas of thoughtful consideration include primary care physician well visit, or when corporations or institutions uh, talk with their employees about health care and retirement benefits. These opportunities allow people to think about organ donation, learn more about it, and move towards a decision beforehand. Importantly, it allows people to talk with their family members and loved ones about what they think about donation, so that everyone's intentions are perfectly clear. Also, how organ donation is perceived and presented is important. It doesn't necessarily have to be so serious or morbid. For instance, Be Life encourages people to go green and recycle themselves. <laughs> See? People get it right away. They smile. They sign up. So context and perspective, as with everything else in life, is extremely important. So let me challenge six common myths with six facts on organ donation and suggest to you 
what you might consider doing to take action. Myths regarding organ donation are driven by fear and misinformation. Well, that red heart on my license means they'll just up and pull that plug. Come on, really? You have to realize that all those paramedics and nurses and ICU docs and ER docs are devoted to saving lives, even under the most extreme circumstances. It's not just a job for them. It's a passion. It's a true calling. Here's the fact. All people, regardless of their stated intention to be organ donors, receive, this, receive the same level and quality of care. It's only after the patient's declared dead that organ donation takes place. And this process is carried out by a separate team of healthcare professionals that's completely distinct from the paramedics and healthcare providers in the ICU and the ER. You're not necessarily too old or too ill to be an organ donor. People in their 70s and 80s have do donated life-saving organs. If you have a health problem or had one in the past, you can still register. The decision as to whether the organs are suitable for transplant is made by the transplant doctors at the time of donation. Some aren't sure that their religions support organ donation. In fact, all major organized religions support an individual's decision to be an organ donor. I personally consider donation to be a profoundly spiritual act that honors the sanctity of life. Some worry that the process of who receives an organ for transplant is somehow unfair. The transplant allocation process, who rises to the top of the waiting list, is inherently fair. Celebrity or political or financial power do not influence this process. Now, there are regional disparities in wait list times in this country. Larger population centers have longer waiting lists, and people have to wait longer and be sicker in places like New York and California. So if an individual has the means to travel from one region to the country to the other, there's nothing illegal about this. And this fact is not fair for people who don't have money to travel around. There's work to be done in this regard that needs to be tackled on the level of national health policy. Another fact is that there are no costs incurred to the family or the estate of the donor. Organ donation is a true gift of life. And finally, I can tell you from my personal experience that donors are treated with the utmost care, respect, and dignity. The operation I perform to remove the organs for donation is compassionate and is not disfiguring. An open casket funeral is certainly possible after donation. So we have our work cut out for us. People are dying every day on the transplant waiting list because not enough people are signing their organ donation consent forms. One donor can potentially save up to 50 people's lives. We need to broaden education and facilitate an individual's decision to take action in every aspect of our culture. Every time you come to the hospital or visit your doctor, we should non-judgmentally ask you if you're an organ donor. When you're filling out your healthcare proxy or living will, your organ donation registration status should automatically be included. We need to harness the power of social media and continue the conversations and disseminate accurate information about donation. So what might you all do to consider taking action? I urge all of you to thoughtfully consider the possibility of registering to be an organ donor. This involves thoughtful contemplation in an appropriate environment with access to accurate and unbiased information. I'm perfectly fine if someone doesn't want to be an organ donor. I respect your decision either way. I do think, however, that this decision needs to be informed and thoughtful. Also, it's very important that you talk with your family members and loved ones about your decision, yes or no, so that if the time should ever come when the question arises, there's absolutely no doubt in everyone's mind what your intentions are. You all can save people's lives. You can leave a meaningful legacy. You can participate in the cycle of life and live on physically and spiritually in others. Transplantation works. Organ donation saves lives. Organ donors bestow gifts of life that give deep meaning and purpose to their own lives and memories. You can all be the miracle of organ donation, and I urge you all to thoughtfully consider doing so. Thank you.